This is the Nemo Sonic Zero Degree Fahrenheit sleeping bag, and it is my favorite winter sleeping bag, but it costs a whopping $600. And this is the Teton Sports Altos sleeping bag, and it is also rated down to zero degrees Fahrenheit, but it costs only 120 bucks. If this sleeping bag can keep me as warm as my Sonic at way less cost, then can we all be saving about $500 on a winter sleeping bag? I'm gonna be putting both of these sleeping bags to the test by spending a night in them. Look like a worm. But first, the stats. This is my show, gosh darn. I'll tell you one thing, you won't be missed wearing this. You can't, can't hide. So first, let's talk about the stats on the Nemo Sonic. You just look rugged. You look like you mean business. You're like gray and yellow, which reminds me of space. <laughs> The Nemo Sonic has a lower limit rating of zero degrees Fahrenheit, but the comfort rating is 14 degrees Fahrenheit. And that essentially says that when the temperatures outside are in the teens, this bag will keep you comfortably warm. This bag weighs three pounds, 12 ounces when you pack it with the included compression sack, but on its own, it weighs three pounds, nine ounces, $600 in cost. And it comes in three different lengths. So there's a short length, which goes up to five and a half feet. There is a regular length, which goes up to six feet. And then there is a long length, which goes up to six feet, six inches, also known as six and a half feet. Uh, <laughs> I got the regular length bag. I am five foot five. I think we're three foot eight. Like a hobbit. That makes you like four foot four. Like a tall hobbit. <laughs> I'm six foot six on Tinder. <laughs> The Nemo Sonic is a down sleeping bag. This uses 800 fill power down. This also has a highly water resistant shell and the foot box is actually waterproof. The reason that that is very important is that our feet are often touching the side walls of our tent and that is where you're most likely to have condensation coming through your tent. So a waterproof foot box helps to keep the entire bag dry so it doesn't soak up any water. At the hood of this sleeping bag, this has a huge like poofy collar around the face part of the bag and then and there's this really nice poofy draft collar as well. A draft collar is something that goes around your neck in a sleeping bag that helps keep air from coming in through your neck hole. Face part and neck hole are both <laughs> official industry terms. <laughs> This down bag has these big baffles on it and this like chevron pattern that you can see. This pattern Nemo claims helps to keep the down in place, which improves the retention of heat. There's also this baffle on both sides of the zipper that helps keep heat from escaping through the zipper. Now there are a couple other features about this bag. The first one are these two thermo gills. They're essentially just little vents. These are designed so that if you are getting warm in your bag, you can open up these thermo gills, allow a little bit of heat to escape, but not have to unzip the entire side of your bag, which would cause a ton of heat to escape. The other thing is this little pocket that is up near the collar of the sleeping bag. It probably fits a cell phone. I would be using it for my headlamp or something else that I want easy access to in the middle of the night. The water filter there. That's actually a really good idea. If you don't know why that's a good use for this pocket, it's because water filters such as my Sawyer Squeeze can't freeze or they will stop working. So keeping it in here would keep it from freezing. You also like, yeah. shove it in the foot box. Although it might start smelling like farts. If the sleeping bag doesn't have a hint of fart in it, it's just been unloved. It's true. All of my sleeping bags smell a little bit like farts. I think the only thing left with this bag is to see how it holds up when I spend a night in it. But before we do that, let's talk about the Teton Sports Altos. Thank you. All right. Hi, my nice. name is what? My name <laughs> is Teton Sports. <laughs> No, absolutely not. This is the Teton Sports Altos Zero Degree Sleeping Bag. This bag actually weighs three and a half pounds with the stuff sack. Apparently without the compression sack, this is less than three pounds, which is more than half a pound lighter than the Nemo Sonic, which again, that's really cool. If this can keep me as warm as that bag, that's awesome. This bag costs only $120. This is actually a synthetic filled sleeping bag, not a down filled sleeping bag. The reason I chose to get this synthetic bag is that it is much less expensive than the down version of this sleeping bag with the same temperature rating, the same weight, and it has really positive reviews. We have a little Velcro tab at the top. 
pretty standard. We do have a draft tube, like a baffle that runs along the zipper on the top side. So that will help keep heat from escaping through the zipper, but it's not on the bottom. There's also a draft collar on the top of this bag that cinches here. You do have a cinchable adjustable hood, that's cool. And then there is actually a pocket on this one as well, but this one is on the inside of the bag. This bag does not have that waterproof foot back down here, nor does it have any kind of waterproofing on the hood. That doesn't concern me a ton off the bat because since this is a synthetic insulated bag, it doesn't need to stay dry to keep you warm. Synthetic insulation actually continues to keep you dry even if it gets soaked through, whereas down insulation does not. There are still some baffles on the sleeping bag. If you see here and here, baffling tends to be significantly less important in synthetic bags because synthetic insulation is essentially just a sheet of insulation. So baffling is really just to keep that sheet in place. It's not to like actually contain the poofy bits like it is with down. I just wanna mention again that this bag is way less lofty than the Nemo Sonic. And that to me is the first indicator that this will probably not keep me as warm. And those suspicions are not only based on my own like knowledge of gear, they're actually based on how these bags are rated. Bear with me, this is a lot of like sciencey stuff, but it's super relevant. So the Nemo Sonic has a lower limit rating of zero degrees Fahrenheit. And that's what they're using to actually name the bag. So that rating is what's considered a temperature at which a warm sleeper will be comfortable. The comfort limit on a sleeping bag is often considered the women's temperature rating because women tend to sleep colder. And so that is the outside temperature at which they are saying that most cold sleepers will be comfortable. That rating system is done by an external organization called ISO and it is standardized. The reason ISO is important is that it is a way to standardize temperatures across the board on bags so the consumer you and me know what the rating is on the bag. And like, we know that it has been controlled by a different group than the brand that's selling us the gear. The Teton Sports Altos and all of Teton Sports bags do not undergo ISO ratings. ISO testing is expensive. Not every brand can do it. And that doesn't mean that you shouldn't trust a sleeping bag if they haven't gone through ISO testing. The lower limit rating on this, the zero degree Fahrenheit, that is just what Teton Sports has put on here. Teton Sports themselves recommends that you choose a bag that has a rating that is 20 to 30 degrees lower in temperature than the low temperature where you'll be backpacking. That means that if you are backpacking in temperatures where it's going to get down to 35 degrees at night, they're recommending that you buy a zero or a five degree bag. That information is on their website, yes. But like in my mind, it's like, why wouldn't you put the actual number at which this bag will be comfortable on the actual label. If I know that this bag is not gonna keep me as warm as the Nemo Sonic, then what's the point of testing it? The reality is that if this is a really awesome 20 to 30 degree temperature bag, I mean, that makes it a really fantastic option for winter backpacking if you're on a budget. But there's only really one way to know if that is true. I'm actually gonna be testing these bags in my backyard, which is currently covered in snow. So I'm gonna get my tent set up and then I will see all of you when it gets dark and I am in the tent with the Nemo Sonic. Kick it to camp. Quick pause. In addition to keeping you warm at night, your sleeping bag can also help keep your gear from freezing, particularly your water. I like to keep my water bottle in the foot box of my sleeping bag at night because if the temperatures drop below freezing, I don't wanna wake up to a solid block of ice, especially if I'm super thirsty. I sometimes also add electrolytes to my water at night because if I've been hiking all day, I've been sweating and electrolytes help my body to retain water, which means fewer midnight pee breaks. As you all know, my favorite electrolyte drink mix is from a brand called Element. Drinking Element has been a game changer for me and as a chronically dehydrated person, Element helps me avoid muscle cramps, headaches, and fluid loss, no matter what the season is. If you're ready to try Element, you can actually place an order through the link below, which is drinklmnt.com slash Miranda Goes Outside. Place your order there and you'll actually get a sample pack of all of Element's delicious flavors, which is cool because then you can pick a favorite. Good luck with that though, because I think that they're all delicious. Mmm, ah, uh, raspberry salt, so good. All right, back to the video. Water. Hey, Daddy.
It's your birthday. So I am all set up in my tent for the night. I am sleeping in my Nemo Dragonfly. I do have a couple things inside here to make this feel very much like a campsite, even though I'm not actually at camp. So in here, I have my Nemo Tensor Extreme sleeping pad. And on top of that, I have the Nemo Sonic. I am wearing a full set of wool base layers and some wool socks. And I also have this little beanie. I also have my Nemo Philo Elite pillow but because I am in my backyard and not actually backpacking, I also have my pillow from home because why not? <laughs> home is right there. Yes. My house is five steps away. Good night, Miranda. Good night, Rainer. Sleep well. Sleeping in my backyard is a little bit weird, but uh, it's pretty cozy. I already opened up one of the thermogills you can see that there. I'm gonna go to sleep. I'll check in with you all in the morning and let you know how I slept in the Nemo Sonic. Good night. Good morning. So I just woke up here in my tent and that was one of the coziest nights sleeping outside that I've had in a long time. These thermo gills on the sleeping bag were so handy last night. It never got super cold. It was basically like 30 to 35 degrees all night. I have no doubt that this sleeping bag would have kept me warm down to much lower temperatures. I'm excited to test out the Altos and see how different it is. Man, I love it though. I do think that the price tag makes sense based on how comfortable I was, on how well regulated my temperature was, and just overall the feel of this bag and the quality of this bag. Thank you. Time to head to the tent and spend a night in this $120 sleeping bag. It is night two of my sleeping bag test, and tonight I am testing out the Teton Sports Altos sleeping bag. It is nearly the exact same temperature tonight. I'm wearing the same base layers that I wore for that test, same top, same hat, I'm using the same sleeping pad. I have brought in my Enlightened Equipment Revelation quilt, just in case I get really chilly in the middle of the night and I need to throw something on top of me to stay warm. Okay, good night. Not quite feeling warm yet, but I just climbed in here after sitting on snow, so I'm hoping that my butt cheeks get warm soon. I am going to go to sleep. I'm very tired, and I will see you all in the morning to let you know how I slept. Good night. Good morning! Oh, I am trying to film this while staying as bundled up in this sleeping bag as I can because it is kind of cold outside. <laughs> It's not that I was ever cold last night. I just don't think I was ever warm. I think I pretty much pushed this to its absolute maximum low temperature last night. Now let's go inside and let's talk about the real differences between the $600 Nemo Sonic and the $120 Teton Sports Altus. Do you want something? <laughs> if this was a more expensive sleeping bag, I would not let you do this. I have to say, I was pleasantly surprised by how warm this sleeping bag kept me. But I was also super aware of the fact that there are certain features and luxuries in the Nemo Sonic that I very much missed in the Teton Sports Altos. Let me start by talking about the hood on this bag. This hood is massive. And I felt like this draft collar was kind of in the wrong spot. Like I could never quite get it situated around my neck. I wound up cinching this really, really tightly around my face. I found that I was getting hit in the face with this piece of Velcro because it kept coming unstuck. And this string was just sort of like cutting in in weird places. And if I didn't cinch it like that, I had tons of cold air coming into the bag. So really for me, one of the biggest downsides of this sleeping bag and one of the places that I really noticed that costs had been cut to make this less expensive was in the construction of the hood. Overall, I will say that I was pleasantly surprised by the Teton Sports Altos. All right, bring me the Nemo. I feel a burp like on the edge of my throat. After testing both of these sleeping bags, here is the conclusion that I have come to. There are certain things about the Teton Sports Altos sleeping bag that make it feel inexpensive. And frankly, it is. It is a fantastic budget bag, 
but it's still very much a budget sleeping bag. It's hard to find a good sleeping bag that costs about $120. And personally, I felt like this really performed a lot better than I expected. I mean, I literally brought out an extra quilt just in case I was cold last night. Like that's how little faith I had in this sleeping bag. And I was totally proven wrong. Teton Sports probably didn't think as much about the design of this bag as Nemo thought about the design of the Sonic. And that definitely shows. I feel like Nemo just thinks about every little feature of every single product that they put on the market. For one, the thermogills that allowed me to kind of open up, amazing. The comfort of the hood and this huge draft collar that just like tucked right around my neck, so cozy. The easy zipper, the fact that there was absolutely no draft coming in through that zipper because of these big wide baffles, all of that was just so cozy and comfortable. Ah, oh, there it is. So if your biggest barrier for getting into winter camping is like mine, which is being cold at night or being uncomfortable at night, then I think that the Nemo Sonic is the best bet for you. On the other hand, if you're watching this video and you're feeling like your biggest barrier to getting into winter or cold weather camping is cost, then I definitely think that the Teton Sports Altos is going to be a fantastic bag for you. I was definitely impressed with its performance. If you have watched this entire video and you're like, I don't want the Nemo Sonic and I don't want the Teton Sports Altos, that is fine. Remember that a lot of sleeping bags like the Nemo Sonic use a third party rating system to come up with their temperature ratings, but then there are plenty of bags like the Teton Sports Altos that don't abide by those third party ratings. And in that sense, you should absolutely read what the company recommends for their bags. If you liked this video and you wanna see me do more cheap versus expensive gear comparisons, let me know in the comments below which gear I should test next. And make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell and I will see you outside. Bye.